Hello, I'm Pastor Adrian Kramer of St. John's Lutheran Church in Ballarat, Victoria, and welcome to our divine service on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We begin with our first hymn, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Our gracious God is among us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Therefore, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Together, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor helpless sinner, confess to you all my sins and repent of all the evil I have done. I have deeply displeased you and deserve your punishment in time and in eternity. But I am sorry for my sins, and I ask you for the sake of the holy, innocent sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me. Amen. Upon your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us call on Jesus, our ever-present Lord, and ask him to help us. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Hear our prayer and save us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayer and help us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayer and give us peace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise, praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all, all the peoples, peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise, praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all, all the, the peoples, peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all the peoples praise you. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Together. Thank you, God of the nations, for calling all kinds of people into your kingdom, even though none of us deserve your great love. Make us confident in praying to you for our own needs and for the needs of others. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in Isaiah chapter 56, reading verses 1 and then from verse 6. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The epistle reading is written in Romans chapter 11, reading verses 1 and 2a, and then from verse 29. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Sanctify us in your truth, O Lord. Your word is truth. Alleluia. alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 15, reading from verse 10. Jesus called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. 
And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our Christian faith. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our next hymn, I Am Covered Over. I am covered over with the robe of righteousness that Jesus gives to me. I am covered over with the precious blood of Jesus and he lives in me. My heavenly Father loves me so and gives to me my Jesus. When he looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus. I am covered over with the robe of righteousness that Jesus gives to me. I am covered over with the precious blood of Jesus and he lives in me. My heavenly Father loves me so and gives to me my Jesus. When he looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus. Grace, peace and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 15. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for granting everything needed for this body and life. Send to us now your Holy Spirit, that we would hear your words, believe them, and live. Amen. A pet dog knows where to go to get what it wants. They go to their master and ask, and if at first they don't get what they want, they don't give up. They persist with whimpers, sad eyes, raised paws, knocking on the door. Their master has given them everything they needed in the past and will surely do so again, if only 
they ask. As a society, we admire dogs for their faithfulness and their intelligence. Even so, to call someone a dog is not a compliment. It's an insult. And in Jesus' day, it was even more of an insult because dogs were regarded as unclean animals. And I'm not just talking about their need for a bath. For a Jewish person to have physical contact with a dog meant that they also became ritually unclean and they had to wash to be made clean again. What does it mean then that Jesus uses a parable to compare a Gentile woman who trusts in him to a dog? This is a desperate woman that we hear about. She has great need and no one has been able to help her. She has reached the end of all hope. But then Jesus comes to her part of the world and she seeks him out. She prays to Jesus just like we do. She prays the same prayer that we cry, Have mercy on me, O Lord, Son of David. This is a prayer of faith. Her prayer is not for herself. It's for her daughter. She is severely oppressed by a demon. We're not exactly sure what that means. She is spiritually oppressed or overwhelming temptation has seized her or she has a crushing fear. We don't know. But any parent will tell you the feeling of powerlessness when they can't help their child. When they wish there was something they could do but all they can do is stand by and watch them suffer. They've tried their best and it hasn't helped. Even if you don't have children, you know that what that feeling is like with your parents, your friends, or even yourself. So she goes to Jesus and she prays. That's all she can do. But it is in fact the best that any of us can do is to go to Jesus and ask for help. This mother has most likely heard about Jesus on the grapevine. He fed thousands of people in the wilderness. He's healed the sick. He has power over demons. Maybe she thought, this Jesus has mercy on the troubled, the ill and the afflicted. Surely he will have mercy on my daughter if only I ask him. The word about Jesus has taken root in her heart. She believes in him. She believes that the power of God is with Jesus. Faith living in her sees Jesus as God's promised rescuer. And her faith calls out for Jesus to help. This nameless woman no longer wants to be an outsider, a Gentile. She wants to be one of God's holy people under his protection. So this mother asks Jesus to set her little girl free. But all she gets is silence. It's like Jesus didn't even hear her. The disciples sure did. They asked Jesus to send her away. But she does not leave. She waits. And then Jesus speaks in what appears to be an answer to the disciples' plea to send her away. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. First silence and now rejection. You know what this woman's going through. We all do. We pray for family, for friends, for desperate situations around the world, and there's no answer, no change, no healing, no miracle. We've been to the funerals of many for whom we've prayed. If we kept count, maybe silence and rejection are more common than the answers we seek. This mother speaks again. But this time she doesn't address Jesus by his title, son of David. She simply pleads to him, Lord, help me. Do you ever think that you use the wrong words when you pray? Like there is some special formula that we can use to unlock God's mercy? Or do you feel guilty when you pray? Because you know you don't deserve anything good from God. 
despite the silence and the rejection, despite her own doubts, the woman goes on praying. Her need is still there. Her faith will not rest until this God of mercy has mercy on her daughter. With persistent faith, she now kneels before Jesus and prays, Lord, help me. And the response from Jesus? It isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What now? Her prayer is not heard because she doesn't have the right bloodlines. There's nothing in her or about her that causes Jesus to answer. Nothing that is, but the faith the Spirit of God has granted her. And that's true for you and me also. We should be surprised that God cares for us at all. Us rebels, us sinners, we deserve nothing good from God. Luther teaches this in the small catechism. Under the Lord's Prayer, the sixth petition. We are neither worthy of the things for which we pray, nor have we deserved them. But we ask that he would give them all to us by grace. We're all unclean from birth, regardless of our nationality or heritage. So every good thing we have comes to us only because God is gracious and merciful. The woman does not budge. She will not be turned away. She will not go until she has what she came for. She'll let Jesus call her whatever he chooses, Gentile, sinner, unclean, if that means getting help for her daughter. And she responds with a witty proverb about dogs consuming the goodies that fall from their master's table. Like any parent, she does what is needed to get help for her child. She goes to Jesus and will not leave until the merciful one shows mercy. And she trusts that he is doing good, even if it doesn't appear that way. She trusts that even in the silence, Jesus is working good. Then Jesus grants her request. O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. More than answering her prayer, Jesus also praises her faith, calling it great. This woman may be a Canaanite by birth, but by faith she is a child of God. She's one of those of whom Isaiah spoke of, saying, The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Now think about what all this means for us. For the salvation that God has given us. For the faith he has granted us. Jesus has come for us unclean dogs also. We are born unclean. And we soon live in unclean ways. We have the audacity to draw attention to the uncleanness of others while thinking we smell as sweet as roses. Yet our sins are a stench in the nostrils of God, like a wet dog. Feel insulted yet? We need it. The truth of our sinfulness calls us to repentance. So now, Let's do as this nameless, helpless woman did. Let us call on God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, Son of David. Let us call on Jesus because he is merciful. That's why he came, to show the mercy of God to sinners. Though innocent, he took on the uncleanness of our sins. Though free, he gave his body to be fixed to the cross and died to set us free from sin and death, from hell and the devil. And now Jesus grants us help from his cross. He washes you 
in baptism's soul-cleansing waters. He grants you more than crumbs from his table, inviting you to eat and drink his very own holy body and blood, to feed you, to nourish your faith with forgiveness and eternal life. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He wants to help you every day. Even if it feels like your prayers meet silence or rejection, he is helping. Maybe the silence is what you need right now. A silence that drives you to the word, to dig up the promises of God, to treasure them and to pray them again. A silence that causes you to trust less in yourself and more in the mercy of God. Faith is not a smooth road. It's more like a rough bush track, ridden with potholes and scattered with rocks. We cannot go the distance on our own strength, and it takes a while for us to learn this. The bruises and bumps deflate our ego, so that we don't trust in ourselves, our plans or abilities, or what we say, but we trust in Jesus. That we trust in his mercy and compassion for us. That we cry out to him in the silence, trusting that he will work good and even is when we can't hear him. For he is good. Maybe ask yourself then, who needs the mercy of God in these days? Who is the Lord calling me to bring before him, asking him to have mercy on them? You might feel like God isn't listening to these prayers because you don't see the changes you want. It might seem like a chore to remember those who need our intercessions daily. But consider this. Others prayed for you to be delivered from all the troubles you have overcome in your life. And the prayer of faith sounds as simple as this. Lord, have mercy. Lord, help. God has had mercy on us. He sent his son to save us. No one thought that God was doing anything good when Jesus hung on the cross, and yet there he worked the forgiveness of sins in silence. In Jesus, God was answering every Lord have mercy ever prayed. And on the third day, the good news of Christ's resurrection brought the answer that we all seek. God is merciful. God forgives. God helps us. And so, to be compared with a dog is not so bad if you are a pooch of the Lord. There's no better master to have than one who helps us in every need of body and soul. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you give to your children many blessings even though we are undeserving. Hear our prayers and answer them according to your grace in Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray together the offertory. We say, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. The Canaanite woman came to Jesus, trusting that he would hear and help her. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father, praying for ourselves and the world. Heavenly Father, thank you for your marvellous mercy, which brought the gospel to us when it was rejected by the Jewish people. Turn the hearts of the Jewish people and all who reject your word or neglect their baptism. Turn them to Jesus in repentance and faith, that they know your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all whom society treats as unclean, that we may not judge anyone, 
but instead love them and care for them. To this end, Lord, remove all hatred between people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the office of the Holy Ministry and the pastors of your church. Watch over our synodical Bishop John and our district Bishop Lester, keeping them in your care. Remind us to pray for them and all pastors, for like us, they need your help too. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. We pray for all marriages, that husband and wife may remain faithful to one another, and that they may love and support each other. Bless those who are preparing for marriage. Grant the blessing of children to husband and wife. Help those who must parent on their own. Be with those who would like to be married but are not, and those whose families have been disrupted in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Merciful Lord, have compassion on your children who suffer for bearing the name of Jesus. Assure them of your love through the gospel and relieve their suffering, turning the hearts of those who kill your children to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the physically and mentally ill, those who are caught in alcohol and drug addiction, and those who do not think life is worth living. Support them with your presence and love. Provide for all who are in need of body or soul. Today we intercede in our hearts for those we know to be in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you have washed us clean in the sacrament of holy baptism. Grant us to never forget our identity as your children. Daily bring your grace to our minds, that we may confidently walk in faith, willing to repent and trusting in your mercy in Christ. As your children, grant us boldness to offer prayers for those we know to be in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, your your will will be done done on earth as in heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread. Forgive forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. We sing our final hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? I'll 
színhan. Go in peace, trusting that the Lord is merciful and grants all you need. God bless.